Good afternoon all. Um, this is my fourth attempt to make a video about this, which is proving to be, well, virtually impossible to make a video about. <laughs> really strange, but I'm really struggling to explain what's going on here. So I'm going to have another attempt, try and explain what it is and what it's doing and how it works. But I don't know whether this is going to work at all, quite frankly. So what this is, is traffic lights. You can see them uh, here. I'll turn it around so that it is traffic lights. Red, amber, green on one side of a, a sort of roadworks and red, amber, green on the other side of a roadworks. And this is one of those temporary traffic lights where it lets cars go one way, then stops them and then lets cars go the other. So that's all I want to do. I want to build a sequence um, that is like a set of traffic lights but it's proving very hard. Now let me put this into run mode. Anyone who's been watching my um, series on my 8-bit breadboard computer will recognize this as part of that breadboard computer and I thought if I stuck a few LEDs on it and programmed in a sequence of jump addresses I could make it appear to be a set of traffic lights and I've done it. I've written the the sequence of codes here. But it's a nightmare to program. I'm going to have another go and it's also a nightmare to explain what I'm actually trying to do here. So I'll, I'll try and explain it as I go along. But anyway, let's put it in. Incidentally, that looks a bit traffic lighty, but it's not. This is random data in the chip, but it isn't random. It's really strange. This CMOS uh, RAM, it's a Sony one. When you power it up, it always seems to power up in the same state with some bits high and some bits low. It's quite symmetrical, really. Um, and it gives rise to something that looks a bit like traffic lights. But if those traffic lights were on a stretch of road, uh, then there would be chaos, clearly. OK, let's put it into single step mode. And I'm going to reset the, um, well, it's the value on the latch. So I'm simply resetting the latch. The circuit diagram of this, well, it's that. I had to go at drawing it, this and it just was horrible. It's a mess. So the data outputs of the RAM go into the latch. That's clocked by the 555, not at the moment because it's in single step. The outputs of the latch go into the addresses of the RAM and that's all this is. Okay, so um, according to my chart here, at address zero, now address zero is one I never want to return to because address zero um, has all these LEDs off and of course that causes a free-for-all if traffic lights are all off. So I don't want to return to that, but I need to program in C0. Now you can see C0 is on these switches, uh, 1100 So let's put in C0 and step on. So now the RAM is at address C0. And at that address, these two lights come on. And of course, those are the two reds. So that's part of my traffic light sequence. Right, so when we're at address uh, C0, I want to program in D0. So uh, that's D. Notice that the lights are all flickering and changing brightness because we've got some bit issues with power distribution. And this is not good because this is a programmable RAM. So I'm trying not to move it too much. Program in D0, move on. Yes, we've got red and amber together. What comes next? Mmm, green. So at D0, I want to program in 84. Uh, that's 8 and that's 4. D0, program in 84. Move on. Yes, we've got green on one side of the traffic lights. The cars are starting to move that way. And red on the other side of the traffic lights. Now, the thing is, I want to hold that pattern for quite a long time, but the clock just runs at a constant rate. And this is where the major issue with this comes in. Um, the six LEDs are on the upper address bits of the RAM. I want the address to appear not to change. You can see these four patterns. Um, this is red and that's the green. Uh, I want four patterns, but the addresses have to change because you can't reuse addresses in the RAM. Otherwise, it'll just go to itself and you'll be locked in a tight loop and it won't flow through this sequence, jumping back only right at the end. So what I'm gonna to have to do here is start counting up through the lower order addresses, which I'm not actually displaying as traffic lights. 
And I can only do that four times, and then I run out, and then I have no more addresses to reuse. So conceptually, this is utter nonsense, um, but I can just about make it work. Okay, so what have we got there? We've got uh, 84. 84 needs to have the data value 85 put in it. So let's put 85 on there. So that's um, 1000001. Let's program that in and single step on. So you can see that's another red on that side, green on this side, but I'm now starting to count through these lower order address bits. Um, so 85 has the data value 86. Let's carry on. Uh, right, 86, that's 86, is it? Yes, it is. You've got to really be able to do binary in your head. That takes the data value 87. Uh, so that's another one with red and green. And then 87 has the data value 90. So that's 1001, uh, 0000. That's 87. That needs 90. Let's put that in. So this is the green light going back through amber only this time because uh, when lights in this country, probably other countries as well, uh, reverse, they go green, amber, red. But when they go forwards, they go red and amber together and then green. Now I've forgotten where I am. Uh, so that's 9090 has the value C1. I kept in previous versions of this video getting C wrong. It was so irritating. So C1 and we're back to both reds. Now I'm not going to um, torture you with the other half of the sequence. I'll program that in off camera. Right, let's do the last few on camera. So that's uh, 4B. Now that needs 60. So that's those up and these all down. Program that in, single step on. Uh, 60 requires the value C3. C3. Program that in, single step on. We're back to both reds. And C3. Notice um, the all red, red and red, was C0 there. In the middle it's C1 and C2 and down here it's C3 because once again I can't reuse addresses so I can only have four versions of red and red and then I've run out of addresses. Uh, okay C3 needs C0 as the programmed address. That should take us back to the beginning which is all reds. That should be it. Should we run the traffic lights? That looks good. So we're on green. It's counting up a pattern while it's on green. Back to amber, back to red. Bit of a delay. The other lights change red and amber together on green. Bit of an intermediate count there for green. Back to amber, back to red. Successful traffic lights. So while my traffic lights run through their wonderfully uh, programmed sequence, attempt four looks like it might even have worked. I'm going to try and explain what the point of this is. Um, my 8-bit computer has this um, RAM, which the, uh, the data outputs of which are latched and then put back into the address. Now, what that means is it can arbitrarily jump from any address to any address because really each instruction in here is simply a go to. So at address 0, I'm saying go to address C0. At address C0, I'm saying jump to address D0 and so on. What I wondered is could those addresses also be the data? Um, so by jumping around in this really strange arbitrary sequence, I could put in the pattern of data that I actually require, which in this instance is traffic lights. Would that work as a, com as a concept for the computer? And of course it doesn't because uh, as I said before, I can't have the same pattern repeating indefinitely because I run out of addresses. Addresses can't be reused. Data very often has to be reused because you may need the same data in lots of different parts of the program. So the concept is utter nonsense, but I have built some traffic lights and there they are and they work. Cheerio.